Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about the Godot game engine, or more specifically, games and applications created using the Godot game engine. Because if you head on over to godotengine.org, the showcase is back. And we got a blog post describing what is up with that. So what we're going to do is go through this initial blog post, then we're going to qu quickly highlight the currently showcased games. And the entire idea behind a showcase, and this is actually really important, when you're first checking out a game engine, one of the first things you do is go check out the eye candy that's attached to it. See what kind of games this engine is capable of doing. And three years ago, the showcase was removed. Now, the original showcase was full of a lot of hobbyist or indie titles that were never going to be published. They weren't really good showcases of the capabilities of Godot. Not to say they weren't fun games, but they may have lacked a level of polish or spit and finish that made the Godot engine and those games look good. So this new uh, one that they've got here is designed to bring and highlight both those games and the Godot game engine. So there are a couple of criteria behind getting on here. They don't necessarily apply to the titles as it exists, just instead of going forward. So in order to get published, published on the showcase, your project needs to already be published and must obey the following criteria. For a desktop game, you must have at least 25 reviews on your platform or platforms of choice such as Steam, and for a mobile game, 5,000 downloads on any given platform's app store. Now, one of the things about the Godot engine is it's more increasingly being used to create applications. In fact, every application we're going to see today, I've already covered on this channel. Uh, but if you've also created an application built on top of the Godot engine, you could be featured here in the showcase as well. And if you are an indie developer, you created a good looking game using the Godot engine, you should be up on the showcase. It really can help you get the exposure you need. And it also helps to make the Godot engine, you know, more appealing to other developers. So what we're going to do is a quick run through all of the titles currently as part of the showcase. And uh, let us jump in. Now, the first one we got is Kingdoms of the Dump. Uh, this one was a Kickstarter game. It's a very SNES-style title, uh, as you can see in action here. It's got a good-looking pixel art graphic look going on. Uh, some of the details down here, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, up to six playable characters, and so on. And no random battles. People like that, of course. So uh, the next one we got here is Rogue State Revolution. Uh, you're a president of the Republic of uh, Basenji. Uh, point ministers make sure they stay loyal, build roads, factories, nuclear power plants, and more if you can afford it. Care for your society, but mind the rebels. This one is coming out in 2021. So some of the titles that are on here are in development titles. So the showcase going forward, again, is going to have a slightly different set of rules. Uh, so this one is available. I think generally you're going to find a lot of these things are going to be cross-platform, but this one actually doesn't have the platform details on here as of yet, I don't think. One of the nice things about the Godot engine, though, is it, it supports so many platforms, and it's almost free to support platforms. Next up, we have X Zodiac coming in 2021 as well. It's a fast-paced, low-poly 3D rail shooter, heavily inspired by the classics of the 90s. I think it's something along the lines of um, Star Fox or Panzer Dragoon. Uh, Join protagonist Q uh, as she fights to free the worlds of Sanzu star systems overrun by the intergalactic character ter uh, terrorist organization known as Zodiac. Uh, next up, we have Until Then. Now, this one is, uh, yeah, interesting. It's uh, available Windows. Uh, OS X, Linux, and on Nintendo Switch at some point. So again, this is a one that's coming soon. Adventure style game. There is a trailer available or a teaser trailer available here. So this one seems to be a little bit more early than a lot of the rest on this list. Next up, we have Gravity Ace. Now this one is actually out and available. It was published in October 22nd, 2020. Positive reviews there. It's still an early access game. Uh, this is a 2D multi-directional gravity shooter, cave flyer, descend into the darkness, fly and blast your way past enemies retrieve the reactor core and make your escape uh so nice looking title this one is currently available for where are my platforms it should be immediately jumping out at me windows and steam os plus linux uh so that next up we've got human diaspora this one's kind of interesting for a couple reasons first off it is uh out so it was released on september the 7th and it is also 3d an action-packed sci-fi first person shooter uh fight for humanity conquer the colony uh, planet, uh, use your arsenal to fight enemy infantry and expand your territory, discover and traverse land, sea, and space environments with nonstop battle and peril everywhere. So you can see what we are dealing with here. So it is, I think, the only FPS on this list as of right now. Uh, it is also currently early access, however, and available for, uh, I guess, Linux and um, Windows. So next up, we have Primal Light. Uh, this one is available as of July uh, 2020. Inhabit Krog, 
uh, a mysterious blue creature and a red loincloth as you traverse a labyrinth of ladders, levers, traps, and monsters. Explore the nooks and crannies of a bizarre and evocative world as you hack and slash your way to victory, leaving a graveyard of grotesque bosses in your wake. So, as 2D uh, platformer style game. Uh, this one is Windows, Mac, and Linux uh, availability, and that one is out now. Next up, this one has like a stunningly beautiful site. I really have to applaud them here. Uh, it's resolution, and we're gonna scroll down and down. This one is actually kind of interesting. It's Windows, Mac, and Linux, also uh, on the Switch, and it's also available on good old games. Um, so, yeah, I check it out. It kind of reminds me of like Sword and Sorcery or uh, Enter the Dungeon or those kind of types of games, but I, I'm not 100% certain. Uh, out 20 or 0528. So it looks like that. Yeah, so this is actually available now. And uh, I think I used this as a graphic for one of the previous releases. It's a stunning looking game. It's a very pretty art style on this one. And again, they've done just a great job on this website. Monolith of Minds uh, and their uh, resolution it's a, just a beautiful website, by the way. So if you're the creator of this game, uh, your aesthetic and your graphic ability, uh, you make me weep at my lack of ability. And kudos to you for making me weep. Uh, next up, we have Dungeon Craft by Mega Sploot. Uh, here's a beta trailer available right here. It's got an unintimidating UI, clean and appealing art style, intuitive tools and fast workflow, smart tiling system, smart object scattering, painting landscape. I, you know what? I have no... Oh, okay, so this is actually a tool and not... Uh, I was like thinking, like, this reads like a features list, not like a game. All right, so it looks like it's a 2D map creator. That's actually cool for making um, your own dungeon-style games and so on. Available for Mac and uh, Windows for, looks like, 20 bucks. So that is... It's a pretty looking map they've got here. So if you're looking for a map creation system, this is called Dungeon Draft. Uh, next up, we have Material Maker. Now, Material Maker, I have covered a number of times on this channel, and I'm actually going to be covering it a number more. This thing is evolving at a rate that is staggering. In fact, there was a somewhat recent release that added, like, the lightweight version of Substance Painter. I'm going to be covering that soon, and probably with their next official release. But uh, Material Maker is like a Substance substance creator light and so it's for creating uh textures out of nodes of things and obviously it is built on the Godot game engine available for all of the major platforms uh actually no for windows hey, i'll stick with that all the major platforms looks like osx is out but hey that's becoming increasingly common in these day and age uh material maker is actually available for free and it is an awesome program so definitely check that one out if you haven't already i've done a couple of videos on it if you want to learn more uh, on that topic, another one I have done a video about, one of the earliest tools published on Godot is RPG in a Box. Basically, this is a voxel-style RPG game engine. So for creating uh, voxel-style RPGs and adventure games, uh, using a visual scripting language comes with a bunch of the assets out of the box for creating this style of game. So it's kind of like... Um, Vox Edit, RPG Maker, and Godot had a bastard love child. That's what you get with RPG in a box. Uh, it's been out since 2019. Uh, 45 positive reviews, still considered early access. Available for, what is that, $22 US? Uh, updated quite frequently. So if you're looking for a, a higher level game creation system, especially if you're into the voxel graphics and RPGs, RPG in a Box is definitely one to check out, and I have. So there's a video out there if you're interested in learning more. The next feature we've got is Pixelrama. Now this one is a painting application built in the Godot game engine. It is a really cool tool. Uh, it is also available for free for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. I have done a couple of videos on this one as well. So basically, it is a pixel graphic tool. You can actually even run this directly inside of Godot using, I think, GD Native? Not 100% positive on that, but it actually can be run in Godot if you want a built-in art system. Pixelrama is definitely a cool project for doing uh, pixel art style creation. Uh, so do check that one out if you are looking for a graphics tool. Uh, next up, we have Game City Studio, a tycoon about game dev. So, you know, the, this is a whole genre. It started with, what is it, game dev story? And then since then, we've got four or five others out there. Uh, it's kind of like you start your own game development company, like Kairu Soft style games where you, you know, you develop titles and you ship them and then people hate them and then you do it again and people hate them even more. And then eventually people start liking them and then you make lots of money, expand, get a bigger studio, make better games and so on. So that is City Game Studio. Again, it's been out since 2019, very positive on the reviews, considered early access right now. And you see some of the graphics in action. I haven't actually checked this one out. I probably should. Available on Windows, Mac, 
and Linux. Next up, we have Hive Time. Build a hive, make some honey. Hive Time is a bee themed management base building sim. Harvest resources, grow your hive, produce a new queen before the current one dies. Is this game free? Uh, I believe the effort put in, da 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 da, it's worth at least 10 bucks. However, I also believe in an ideal world, financial barriers should never prevent people. So it's, it's free ish. Uh, is the game finished? We consider Hive Time to be a complete game. If you want to go ahead and check it out, it's available over on, I think this is itch.io. Pretty sure this is itch.io. Yeah, it's, it's itch.io. Uh, so you can download it on itch.io for, uh, let's see, Linux, Mac, and Windows. Next up, we have Rings of Saturn available over on Steam. I actually don't know my Greek letters that well. Is that Theta? Is that Theta V? I have no idea. We'll go with Rings of Saturn. Uh, this is an unexpected discovery of valuable minerals within the rings of Saturn who sparked a thriving space excavation industry. Experience hard sci-fi top-down space mining simulator with every aspect backed up by real physics and science. Uh, this is one of the other full 3D titles on the list. It's an early access game, Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, oh, there's a demo available or it's like eight bucks US to pick this one up. Again, it's been out since 2019, although in early access. And then we got Precipice. Uh, this one's neat because you basically, it seems like it's a game of like global strategy kind of thing, but you play as anamorphic animals. Uh, and they're kind of freaky. So um, it, it's a game of diplomacy and war in the atomic age. Safeguard your closest allies and change unfavorable regimes without giving away your long-term ambitions. Every action risks an enemy reprisal. And if nobody backs down from a standoff, we all lose. <laughs> Oh, and they have Kanukistan. All right, Canada is a country. I'm going to have to pick this one up because I, I like seeing Canada take over the world. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. And you know what? It's manifest destiny. It is going to happen. We will take over the world one day. Uh, so this was released in 2019. Very positive reviews, 222 reviews out there. It's also pretty cheap at, well, unfortunately, Canadian money isn't worth that much. Uh, probably about six bucks US. Uh, and it is available on Windows and Linux from the looks of things. Uh, and then that is it. So if you want to check it out, here is the new showcase over at Godot. Uh, it is available at godotengine.org forward slash showcase if you want to go ahead and check that out. As I mentioned earlier on to start, they also are doing uh, yearly show reels. So if you want to you know, see a bit of a summary of the games out there or games in development or you want to submit your game for to be part of the yearly showcase, it is out there. And again, there is a form out there. So if you want to get yourself included on this list, go and fill out the form. Again, going forward, the criteria is a little bit harder, uh, but it is not necessarily a strict requirement, but it's highly recommended that you meet those uh, those points. And if you don't match at least one of those categories, you're probably not going to be featured. So, you know, you know, it's, it's kind of like that always. You get in early, it's a little bit easier. As it goes on and they've got more and more to choose from, it gets a little bit harder to be included. So um, if you have created a published game that you think people will be interested in and you want to help promote the Godot game engine, there is a form here to submit stuff. So I'm, I'm happy to see that the showcase is back. That is um, really useful for people is when you first come and you check something out, one of the first things you're going to do is say, Hey, what, what can I build with this game? And this is this is key. So I think it should be a high priority here. It should probably be like features news showcase then or maybe features news download and then learn then showcase. It should be a high priority thing on this menu. And hopefully it ends up there eventually. Right now I think it's just in the footer. Yeah, it's right here in the footer. Um, I, I guarantee you a lot of people, including myself, I look at tons of game engines. And one of the first things I do when I look at a game engine is look at the games that have been made with that engine. Another thing that I would recommend if you were on the Godot team, I would put the platforms as icons over top of the game, especially uh, with games that are on like Switch, because you can see that that's important to people. You can see, oh, okay, this game, this engine can actually make console level games. Again, a key thing. So I would consider adding uh, platform information over top of these thumbnails, and I would definitely make sure that they are showcased in the, uh, the menu as a priority item, because this is a really important thing when people are first checking out. A game engine. So that is it. Those are the games that are currently, a lot of them are, you know, either early access in development or have been out for a little while made with the Godot game engine. What, you know, anything stood out to you or is there anything missing from that list that you think should be on it? Let me know. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.